I'll just have a cup of coffee. Beer it is. No, I said coffee. Beer. Coffee. Beer. C O B A. Oh, <gasps> what? No. No. What? Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, <gasps> what? You went into the attic? <gasps> I'm very disappointed and terrified. Why don't you bring this potato? That's pretty bad. Mom, you're always trying to give me potatoes. What is it with you? I just think they're neat. Why do birds suddenly appear over there, over here? Eight spices? Oh, some must be doubles. Or a gun. What the hell? Oh, no, not Lenny. Not Lenny? Kids, turn off the TV. I have some bad news about Lenny. Not Lenny! Live from the epicenter of independent cinema, it's Film Stuff! With your host, Jake S. Weissman! Tonight's guest, writer and director, Chris Ray! With me, the original John C. Riley, Jack Quint! Let's start the show! Welcome, film dorks. I'm so glad to be back here. We got a great show for you. There's not much in the way of news today. We want to jump right in. Uh, the only news that I do have is thank you so much to friend of the show, Paul Watts. He mailed in this beautiful, handsome John McGurk tote. Uh, and it also came with a little home movies clapboard, which, as we all know, I just love home movies. Thank you so much. Paul Watts from back home. Uh, if you don't know him, definitely go check out paulwattscartoons.com. Jack, oh, Jack. Jack, oh, Jack. Here I am. The original John C. Riley, eh? Is I. Is very Chicago. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, you know, we love to play, pay tribute to our, to our, uh, you know, our inspirations, people who make us want to keep making art. And speaking of keeping on making with things, please like, share, and subscribe <laughs> to the program. You can do that at JellyRollChicago. Keep on with making with things. With the making of the things, you can subscribe and like us on Facebook so that you will know when we update and when Jake does face. Uh, I'm sorry. When you do film stuffs light. Uh, the uh, daily update and make sure that you are watching us on YouTube at the end of the month or the beginning of the month whenever we do our monthly film series on film stuff so far so that you will be able to watch the uh, great works done by our guests in the full 1080 HD. <laughs> Beautiful, Jack. And if well, you want to help the program, oh you can goodness. Venmo us at <laughs> JellyRollChicago.com. So lots of ways to show love to the program. Wonderful. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I just want to dive right in. Jack, uh, let me give you, uh, it's not hard to find, um, you know, a professional biography of Chris Ray. Uh, she just made the film. I used to go here, a uh, big Chicago film. She made the film unexpected. Uh, I personally love uh, one of her first films called Empire Builder. Uh, she is super wonderful. I actually have a personal uh well, it's not a personal history. It just goes way back. Let me explain. Uh, when I first moved to Chicago, it was 2005, and I was 18 years old, wondering what to do. I was a volunteer at the Chicago International Film Festival, and uh, there was one movie that everyone was talking about, and that was Kissing on the Mouth. And um, it, it was I got to sneak in and watch some of it, watched all the Q&As that I could, and I just remember, Chris, personally, I got to talk to the filmmakers after, and she was so kind to me and it has just continued ever since almost inexplicably it's inexplicable <laughs> towards me she's just a kind human being just Jack, to you and i think she's just really warm and wonderful uh, <laughs> and it shows in her art uh but then flash forward 2014 i jack i don't even know how old i am at that point it's it's uh nine years later right so when you um, were a wee lad of 22 <laughs> I think I was 27, which everyone knows 27 is a really uh, easy year. Yes. Um, I was doing independent uh, curation for a small micro cinema, and Chris let me show Empire Builder four times in a month, knowing that it was just 
to let like this indie kid cut his teeth. I am so excited to actually have like a full on conversation with her. Um, and so I don't want to put it off anymore. Uh, no, Jack, I will see you on it. the other side. Yes. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> Welcome, Chris. Oh my God, Jake, I didn't know. Like one, I didn't even know that Chicago Film Festival thing. Really? Did I, you I, hear me? Have you told me that before? I don't think so. I don't think I've, I, I don't, I think I might've started cool. too long and I didn't. Yeah, no, it stays, it stays in my mind just because that was, it was 2005. So it's before YouTube and it, this idea yeah. of a bunch of people making a feature film on what DV yeah, was, tape was just yeah. like mind blowing to me. It really yeah. it blew my shit away for real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it like blew, well, you know, not to like toot my own horn from 2005 or whatever, toot, but toot, toot I away. think it did, I think it did blow people's minds at the time, but it, it was like, it was us, you know, me and my now ex-husband, then boyfriend, Joe oh, wow. Swamberg, um, and two of our other friends, you know, made that movie, but then other people were making movies like that at the same time, like, um, the Duplass brothers, that's when they were coming up and Andrew Bajowski and stuff. Yeah, it was like one of those weird, um, what is it called when lots of people have an idea? Zeitgeisty? Yeah, it was kind yeah. of zeitgeisty. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, well, I just always appreciate you're a very giving filmmaker. And that's I think very it's nice. Wonderful. Um, so uh, one of the interesting things about the pandemic is that all of these Q and A's are now on YouTube. So there's like, you can sift through all sorts of uh, interviews with you. Like Q and A's from 2005, <laughs> are they? No, not from 2005, no. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. I haven't actually looked, maybe I should. I, no, I mean, I, from uh, I, wonder... I used to go here, I meant to shift gears. Oh, so. I used to go here, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to go here, um, yeah, that makes sense if that's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from the Chicago International Film Festival, uh, that there yeah. is one from there, and then I think Milwaukee and a bunch of other ones. Yeah. Um, so there's a good sense of what you were feeling during the pandemic, now oh, that yeah. things are over-ish and yeah. opening up-ish, yeah. What? How do you have any like overall feelings about the experience of releasing this movie? Or oh, what are your overall feelings fine. of release? Yeah, <laughs> it's <was> fine. <laughs> like to be to, you know, like to be totally honest, like partly it was probably good, like for yeah. the movie. You know, it's it's interesting to. You know, now that we're, I think we can safely say, at least in Chicago and our in our privileged, um, you know, first world country or whatever, like we uh, we can say we're post pandemic, like or we're like transitioning into post pandemic yeah. or, or something. Um, I would say it went like the the movie got released uh, August. I want to say August 9th or something like that. And that the timing was kind of great. Like not, it was so, it was so early still that studios weren't releasing films yet. Okay. They were still cautious about putting films out there. Um, and there just wasn't a lot like going on <laughs> and everyone was still at home. So sure. no one was doing, there was no, there was not very much new content and everyone was staying home and wanting to watch movies. So, and and the movie that I made, I used to go here is like, it's a it is um, it's a fun movie. Yeah. And I think people were kind of craving that. Like, you know, I didn't make like a serious like art film about a dramatic subject. So, right. so I think people were kind of like at that point, people were just like, I just want to like laugh and hang out and like feel yeah. good. You know, I I don't want to make it seem like my movie has no substance, but but it's not. It's no, not in the, heavy. in the best way possible. It feels like Chris Ray's Animal House. You know, <laughs> like there are a yeah. couple of like moments in there, but everything is so grounded, and the yeah. performances are so there. Um, yeah. And even just um, how the characters talk about restraint, and then seeing the restraint throughout the film, uh, where you decide to kind of push the brakes, kind of let the gas go and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all cool. works together. Uh, lovely. How has the, what's the life of the film right now? I know, I think it's available on a uh, major streamer right now. It's I, on I HBO it. Max. So I, it's like oh, hey. on, 
Yeah, so it's just fucking great because people can <laughs> just like watch it for free, which is really like in uh, my experience of being a filmmaker, that's when people watch your movies. So there are definitely people that bought it on iTunes or Amazon or whatever. And but a lot of like I got a once it hit HBO in December, people were like, I watched your movie. Oh, great. <laughs> and I was like, fantastic. Um, I, I am sad I never got to see it in like a theater. Like, you know, we were gonna premiere at South by Southwest and we had the this like, we had a fucking great time slot and like an amazing theater, like yeah. 500 seat theater. And I was really excited about be, like feeling that energy and hearing laughter, especially with a comedy. Um, and I am sad I didn't ever get that experience, but I bet I will get it one day. I was, that was my next question was yeah. uh, one of the uh, questions somebody asked you like 10 months ago was yeah. uh, you said you desperately want to see the film in a theater with yeah. people. Have you yeah. had that uh, experience yet? No, I haven't. And also it's like, I doubt I will be able to replicate what would have been like, I can't sure. imagine 500 people buying a ticket to a movie that's already available online. I, <laughs> to an I independent film there. that's already available online. So like, um, I probably won't be able to do that, but but it's cool. And and to be honest, like uh, I didn't have to premiere. I thought I was gonna have, but it but in Chicago it premiered a drive-in theater, and I and that was like amazing. And That's everyone great. like kind of and they had it was like when when the movie was over, instead of applauding, everyone honked their horns. Oh, cool. It was so cute. <laughs> so I wouldn't have been able to have that experience had, you know, had yeah. I missed out on like the South by premiere, so. That's wholly you know. unique. Yeah, you know, it yeah. was. Yeah, I'll probably never have that again. So that, it was, it was cool. Like I can't complain, you know? Sure, would you consider, and maybe this is too on the nose, but <laughs> would you consider doing like a, um, like a college tour of the film talking oh, about Oh yeah, that would be so yeah. fun. I cool. would love to do that, yeah. Do you okay. wanna run that for me? Of course. I got Great. all I got all sorts head of theaters rolling right now. Head of those I, universities, get that sweet university cash. I live next door to one. We come from university town. We can make something happen. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. <laughs> How's Chicago right now? How's life in Chicago? I haven't it's been in a while. Chill. Chicago's yeah. great. Like I just went to I just went out to dinner at uh, Parsons and like everyone's out. It's beautiful. It's summer. Like everyone's like ready. Like That's we're great. here. We're doing okay. it. Yeah. It Are feels you good. Still in like Lincoln Square, Andersonville mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just opened up a Parsons like yesterday in Andersonville. Oh, okay. Wonderful. So that was great. Yeah, I'm still here in Lincoln Square. It's great. Great place to live. It's one of the fun things. I know everyone talks about it in these uh, interviews, but I spent so many years uh, like walking dogs and just living yeah. in Andersonville um, and, and Lincoln Square. Yeah. Uh, so everyone just immediately the movie starts. We're all like Western. Cool. We love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, great. And that is such a wonderful uh, thing that I do see in specific specifically in Chicago filmmakers, maybe I have a bias for us. Um, but the thing where it just, the movies look so incredibly Chicago. Uh, yeah, because people, as you know, when people come outside of, of Chicago and film something here, then they're like, okay, our establishing shots are like the Sears Tower and like right. the Navy Pier Ferris wheel, which nobody actually goes to. And Chicago is like, you know, it's like a city neighborhood, so. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it takes someone to really live here to like, to know what the spots are. Totally, yeah. We have uh, jokes that me and my Rogers Park uh, filmmaker friends yeah. joke, like you have to have mural shots. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. You just got to find the mural shots. And you, can, <laughs> you know yeah. who's a Rogers Park filmmaker by where yeah. the shots are. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, okay, then uh, what's what's next? I guess, as far as, um, uh, are you are you writing? Are you uh, producing? Is it all ready to go? Uh, I'm doing, well, you know, it was kind of like my, one of my goals after I used to go here was release was I really wanted to have like lots of kind of like little pots bubbling at once. So I've got a bunch of little things percolating. Like I, like, well, I just directed a couple of episodes of the show called Work in Progress that's shot here in Chicago. That's like really, I love this show. And um, 
and there I just directed a couple of episodes for season two that that was so fun and I've been editing that and then um, I'm writing a feature with a friend um, I'm writing a pilot for for myself um, and I'm like attached to direct a couple of scripts that other people wrote that's great um, oh and I'm directing an episode of a of a Hulu show in August um, yeah congratulations lots of little things cool yeah. is that? It's so cool. <laughs> I'm doing it. You're making it happen. Yeah. Um, so I have, this might seem a little off path, but I do have okay. some, I do have a question. Uh, I was oh. watching the movie First Man and you oh, showed yeah. up in it. Yes. Can you tell us the story behind why, what's, uh, did you just it audition so for it? It was so weird. Or? No, I'm like definitely not an actor. Like I don't have, I, I did have, a double take. <laughs> I know it's so weird. It was so weird that I was in that movie. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I do have agents, but they don't represent me for acting. They represent me for directing. And like, yeah, I don't. I've never auditioned for anything before. And I just, it was a while ago now. I guess like two or three years ago. I just like got an email from my agents that said, "Listen, we know you don't really act, but you've gotten a request." to audition for Damien Chazelle's new, for this movie. <laughs> and I just like scrolled down and I was like, whoa, Damien Chazelle and Ryan Gosling. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I almost didn't do it because I was like, to be honest, like I find, I find putting yourself on tape to be so like humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's interesting. And, and they wanted me to do an accent. Uh, like a southern accent okay. and i like i i was just like man i am not an actor but i was like um well i have to try to do this weird thing so i did i put myself on tape and craig zobel uh craig zobel the director of mayor of east town uh <laughs> craig zobel's basement in athens georgia and um and i i sent it i yeah, I put myself on tape. I uh, I did a little monologue. I sent it to my to my agents, and I said like, net like, like don't watch this. Never show it to anyone. <laughs> and then they called me two weeks later and said I got it. And I thought maybe it was like I was like, how did this even happen? Did like because I didn't know Damien Chazelle. You know, he had Whiplash that played festivals and stuff, but like. He wasn't really part of like the the indie crowd that I was a right. part of. I did we didn't really like live in the same world necessarily. But he, uh, it was the story I found out after I went and filmed it was that he had this like small part. It's so small. I should really be a background actor. Like I'm barely in it. I think they cut out all my lines. Uh, except maybe like I say one word uh -huh. um, and and afterwards I was like what happened how did you cast me and I guess they just like couldn't he was very particular about like who played this role and it was all based on real people and and like he just couldn't find someone so he asked the ca casting directors to think outside the box so I think they just like sent it to the agencies and they were like whoever you got and, how cool is um, that? And so I, I don't know how many, I don't know, but yeah, they sent it to me, and I think I kind of look a little bit like the woman who was the real woman, and um, yeah, yeah, they cast me. It was in <laughs> fucking incredible. It was the most money I made for like the littlest work I did, and <laughs> I got like a whole trailer with a fireplace in it. Wow. And I, yeah, I got to hang out with Ryan Gosling, who told me I was cool and gave me a hug. <laughs> and I was like, this is the best job I've ever had in my life. Short of going into space yourself. <laughs> yeah, way better. Are you kidding me? Way, way better. better than going in space. I don't go to space. So are you um, are you, you planning on acting anytime soon or? No, Do you wanna? Not. Just no interest? Listen, if someone gives me a gig like that again, I'll 100% take it. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure the reason why all my lines got caught is because I'm not a very good actor. Oh. Nah. But I was I was convincing enough to get the role, but when push came to shove, like I don't know. <laughs> the bar is um, high now. Yeah, the bar is very high. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do uh, have another question. Uh, this yeah. one is about casting in Unexpected, cool. and uh, I don't know 
if you don't want to answer this, this is fine. Uh, I remember when we were doing the Empire Building, Empire Builder screeners. Yeah. You told me that there was another actor attached to the lead oh, of yeah. Unexpected. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering what happened to that. If that was like a normal thing. If you're not allowed yeah. to talk about it, then don't worry about it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if it's cool to talk about that or not. Usually, I usually I'm just a totally open book. There is I knew a, it was a little maybe, touchy. Maybe I can talk about it without totally talking about it. But I had another actor attached. Who was a who is a comedian, and um, and then she dropped out, and I don't really like I I don't know it was like a, you know they said it was like a scheduling thing I don't really know what exact I I get the feeling it was more than a scheduling thing I don't really know I got along with this person totally fine but. Um, but in the end, it would have been, so, I'm so glad that she dropped out and that I got. Um, Kobe is wonderful. Kobe, she's like, Kobe is incredible, like um, a, a bajillion times a better actor than this other person. <laughs> and and we ended up becoming like friends, you know, like the, it, similar to I used to go here, the lead in both of those films is almost in every frame of the movie. Right. And and in both of those instances, that person, Kobe Smolders for Unexpected and then Gillian Jacobs for I Used to Go Here, really became my my creative partner. Um, and and I lucked out with both of them that they were wonderful. And this other person that was attached, I think, would not have been easy to work with. And and it would have been a, I could already tell from prep though though I was kind of too inexperienced to to know sure. like oh this isn't gonna work um uh, i'm i'm really glad it didn't work out <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> With, no the movie yeah. would have been totally would have had a totally different been vibe for totally it totally different yeah so, but so it would have been interesting to see her in that kind of a role oh yeah but i mean here yeah it, it turned no out dice. Uh, it's it wonderful out. and uh it, better. it is available for free right now on um, oh. imdb tv so you have to watch ads, which was kind I of, know that. it was kind of funny. Cause like, there'd be some like, like the heaviest part of the movie and then just cut to like a Lunchables commercial, which is, <laughs> it is what it is, you know, like. It's <laughs> oh, so funny. I didn't, but, I honestly, yeah. this is the first uh, time I'm hearing that IMDb exists. IMDb TV <laughs> exists or it's that you're watching movies on it. So it's, it's all free, but there, but there's ads for it. So like Pluto TV. Um, huh. It's just, I think HBO Max just dropped a new version where like, instead of paying the $15 for the full, you know, gamut, you pay oh. $10 a month and there's oh, a dang. couple of ads in there. Oh, interesting. So the, the model is starting to infiltrate oh. a little bit more. Huh. Interesting. Seems. So. Cool. I'll take um, it. Well, that's a, a fine segue into the other <laughs> kind of major umbrella question I wanted to ask you, which is. Yeah. Um, so you've been in this world since 2005. You went to school yeah. before that. I mean, you were making yeah. a movie before. Um, yeah. What about the independent world and community has stayed the same since then? Is there like a consistent something? Is that too broad of a question? Because I will ask what's different. It's, it's interesting because I, I have to say, like, I almost don't know. Okay. Um, because I, I also, like, I... I from time to time we'll do things like this or or I'll do I'll talk to kids um you know like at that are in film school or also I teach at Northwestern every once in a while um I'll teach film class or two and and I'm 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 inclined to tell them like go out and make a movie for no money and then premiere at a film festival and like you th which is like the model that worked for me mm -hmm. um but i don't know if it's the same i i think it is but i'm kind of like i kind of grew out of it or something like sure. and so i don't know i actually don't know if like if it was a really special time in the in the mid to late 2000s um and if like you know from 2005 until 2000 had I guess like 10 at uh, 12 maybe mm -hmm. uh, was when I was really like coming 
up and um and like we were going to south by southwest every year and we had the same crew of friends that didn't live in chicago people in la people in like san francisco people in new york like mm -hmm. We had, we were coming up with like the Duplass brothers and the, the Safty brothers and like Barry Jenkins and Amy Simetz and like all of these like cool kids were, were making movies around the same time. And like, we would all like invariably see each other at these film festivals. And then we would like share our work and party and like, make friends with each other and stay in touch and then people were making movies so often that like we would see them the next year a couple years later or something sure. um right the output was outrageous like it was crazy yeah because we were because we all figured out how to make movies for cheap yeah and the festivals were and they were good and so the festivals were programming them so so that was really special. And then we would all like support each other. And yeah. Joe, my my ex was like, especially really good at like getting getting all these people like involved in, you know, in same projects and like, right. and getting talented people together and, um, and creating, you know, a community around it, which really stuck. And, yeah. you know, my best friends are still these same people. Right. So even though it's like I 2005, what's that? Is that 15 years ago? <laughs> Something. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, S 16, you know, yeah. yeah, 16 years ago. It's like uh, David Lowry, whose movie premiered or one of his movies premiered 2005, too. It's like, He's still one of my very best friends. Like, right? He shot your film, right? He shot he Empire shot Builder. My first two, yeah, he shot Empire Builder. He oh, right. edited. He edited my first two features and and my short. And like he and we still talk all the time. Like we were just texting today. Um, and and so I I hope that that's still happening. Mm -hmm. Like I hope that there's a new set of like twenty somethings that are making stuff and premiering at festivals and like creating their own little community. But I don't know for sure, sure. because I'm not a part of it. Um, That's fair. But, but, you know, I just had a friend whose movies playing at Tribeca who, um, who was sort of like anxious a little bit about like, Oh, I better like try and get some meetings with like some managers and agents and stuff like that when I'm there. And I was like, just hang out with other filmmakers. Like, yeah. don't worry about that stuff. Like just meet the other people that made movies and like hang out and like have some beers and dance. Like yeah. that to me has been more um, valuable, not just professionally, but personally than any, like any meetings with anyone in the industry that I may or may not have had like during those years, you know? Definitely. Um, so the, the community aspect is is the most uh, the the most special and most valuable like um, part of of indie filmmaking that that I've taken from it. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Huh. And um, then, what has your um, experience been? And if it's if it's similar along the same lines, you know, yeah. let me know. But uh, specifically as a woman coming mm -hmm. through during the same time. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like a little hard to know really what would be, what would be like just my personal experience versus like what it means to be like a woman in general during this time. It, right. it was also like, I would say, for me, because Joe was more prolific than than I was, and you know, more sort of like, I, he was getting a, a lot more traction than I was like during those years, especially once we had kids. Mm -hmm. um, it was I I did I don't know my career wasn't really at the forefront necessarily, and lately it really has been, and I think yeah. like I, and that could a lot of that could be just like a personal circumstance for me. But I also think that like in the last few years, there has been like a huge push um, to hire women and to seek content from women mm -hmm. um, that has been noticeable and like rad. Um, and I'm like, I am 
feeling that like, like there, there are, you know, it's like, I, I've definitely been hired for, for stuff that I know they've been looking for a female director specifically. Uh -huh. And I would say 10 years ago, they were like, you know, those same people would have been looking for the best director possible, not necessarily, you know, a, a female and they would have probably ended up hiring a guy. Right. Um, and it's been really cool to, to get the opportunities that I've been getting in the last like year, especially um, because people are looking for specifically like female led stories. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's changing for the better and, and it doesn't feel like a fad, you know, it oh, feels no. like, it feels like it's here to stay, which is great. And I'm like seeing because of that, I'm seeing a lot more, um, I'm hearing a lot of younger female voices feeling like the confidence that I didn't have when I was younger because it didn't feel like, it didn't feel like an industry that was like for me. It felt like an industry that I could maybe like figure out a way in and like maybe break into. And of course there was always like exceptions. Right. Um, but I didn't, like when I was in film school, I wasn't watching movies by women. I was watching movies by men. Like all the cool indie directors that I admired were men. Right. Um, mostly white men, you know, and, uh, and that's like not the case anymore. And that is making a huge difference. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, as far as people making movies and uh, where movies start, uh, we talked a little bit about this during the pre-show or tech check or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Um, <laughs> we're, we're all dying to know. So when you start, I used to go here. Yeah. There are several production credits oh, that my start God. before the film. Yeah. Uh, and it, <laughs> no, so I don't want to put anybody on the spot. And God, now we know like this or something. It's, it's I don't want to exaggerate. It's it's it, it was enough for me to take note. Yeah. And then it was you know obviously the story is personal. Obviously you wrote the script. Yeah. And, yeah. Um. So where does the genesis of the film like okay I'm ready to make this movie. Yeah. Go. From and then, where do you fit among eleven different production companies? I, I, it's crazy. Like I didn't even, you know. And I was like, I don't even think I got a producer credit in the end. Like really? I was, a, I was a producer, but I honestly think the opening titles. I was so stressed out about how long they were that I think I left <laughs> my name off. I honestly do. I think That's I left my name move, off. Chris. That's a classic. I think move. I left my name off because I was like, this is insane, you know? <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, I think I'm not credited as a producer on my own movie. Um, <laughs> the, 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 okay, so I wrote it on my own. I wrote I used to go here by myself. And then um, and then I sent it my agents and they sent me on a bunch of meetings trying to find a production company that would be a good fit. Okay. And so I met with different people and the people that I liked the most were the lonely, what was Lonely Island, which is Andy Samberg, uh, Yorma Tacone and Akiva Schaefer. Schaefer, is yeah. that right? Akiva Schaefer, yeah. yeah. Um, that Yorma's in your movie. Yorma's in my movie, plays Bradley joy. Cooper. He's a joy <laughs> in real life too, I love him. Um, so they, they, the woman that run, ran at the time, their production company, her name is Becky Slobiter, and her and I totally hit it off. And like we, I went and she read the script. I went and met with her, and we were like, "Well, we're best friends. Like, obviously, we can make this movie together." Um, but they didn't have money, so they they were like, they totally shepherded the process. Like, I can't imagine this movie ever happening if Becky wasn't involved. She's like incredible. And the guys read the script and Yorma especially was really like creatively helpful um, and, and helpful with casting and, and you know, obviously who's in the movie and stuff, but Becky was really the one who's running the show. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so then it was all about like trying to find the money and we've, and, and then we found the money, this company called Yale productions. Um, they gave us the budget. They funded mm -hmm. the film. Um, but the way that they work is that they have a bunch of different investors 
that invest into a fund oh. um, that come that that fund then funds the films. Okay. So as part of their contract with these individual people, they're like, cool, you get to invest in a movie and also your name is gonna come up as a producer in the opening credits. That's, so that's so, so cool and so brutal at the same time. Oh so like I didn't really <laughs> realize that. Uh -huh. that's, a de that's a deal that they make with these people for like the fund and not like a deal they make with me or whatever. Right. Um, so they don't care how long the opening credits are. <laughs> 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 they just want all the people on there right. because it's like contractual or whatever. Right. And then on top of that, we had to find the Lonely Island couldn't actually be on set because uh, they were doing their other stuff. Uh -huh. So we had to find producers that could come on set and actually be on set producers. And so we got these two great producers, Jonathan Duffy and Kelly Williams to come and be on set. And they have their own production company called 10 Acre. And so we had, that's already three production companies. Right. There's Lonely Island and Yale. And then Yale, because of those contracts with all the wealthy people that invest in their fund, have all these deals with them. So yeah, it was, it fucking insane. Like, that and that what sense. what the final credit sequence is, is what is the result of like so many fights that I had with people <laughs> over the phone. Really, where I was like, I cannot make this any like this is this was already the what you see is a compromise of many many phone calls of much like arguing from my side. That's like this is a creatively insane because it was much longer than that before. Because really? before they all needed their own card. So now they've like shared cards with other people. What yeah, are they putting like, in? Are so they putting boring. in like good I have no money? Idea. You have no I, you have no access to I that. I have no like, idea. They can like, pay a thousand bucks. Here's a card. No, I think they I actually have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea how much money they put know. in. Yeah. That's I yeah, mean I that's the, that's that. the shop that I love. That's the <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I, it is. It's um, interesting. And no one's ever asked me that question before, but I'm sure really? <laughs> everyone that watches the movie is wondering why the fuck is this so long. Well, let me tell you something. It's worth getting Ooh. through it. <laughs> and um, it's uh, it's a lovely movie. Like I said, Thanks. it's it's very it's very grounded, but it's very buoyant. It's it's light. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the performances are next level. Yeah. Um. um Let's bring Jack back okay. on. Oh, Jack, oh Jack. Yes. Hey, you're buddy. On Jack. Hey, um, anything hey. burn? What's what's burning on your brain? You got any major questions for Chris here? I do have a couple of questions. Um, Great. One uh, er, er, earlier today, I was watching Unexpected. I had already seen. I used to go here, and uh, they're just they're like day and night in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, Unexpected is has this very very intimate type of vibe, and that mm -hmm. comes through both in your shots. There's just this mm -hmm. very there's this close like handheld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's is there a single mm -hmm. shot on a tripod, or is that all just? There is. There's one scene on a tri. Uh, we shot a whole week actually on a, on tripod, and then we looked at the footage and we were like, this is bad. Maybe a whole week or a whole day, and then we were like, we have. Then we switched to handheld. And yeah. uh, <laughs> and meanwhile. Um, I used to go here. Everyone is just very wrapped up in their own world. Mm. Um, and and in both of these, it really comes through. For me, it came through very much in the dialogue. And I was, um, and uh, you worked for about two years on the script for Unexpected, I was reading. So I was wondering, mm, sounds um, right. uh, uh, if, did I used to go here have a similar type of a process? Or it has this oh, very yeah. immediate kind of feeling. So I was wondering if you just like really had your nose to the grindstone when you were doing that. Oh, you know? no, no. It took me longer to do I used to go here. Unexpected, really? I wrote with, I had a writing partner, um, Megan Mercier, who, who I wrote that with, which was like, so helpful. I'm writing a script now with a friend and it's it's great because we're like, okay, we're gonna write tomorrow and then we do. Whereas <laughs> when I'm writing a script by myself, I'm like, I should really, I gotta really write tomorrow. And then I'm mm. like, you know what? Let me go do this other thing that's not writing any <laughs> anything but writing. So it took me a really long time to write I used to go here and I wrote it as a totally different script. The original title was all I think Alma Mater, and I was uh, it was the lead role was a guy. 
Okay. And I wrote a whole feature script with a male main character that was different. <laughs> it's still, still, <laughs> he made very different I would love, I would love to actually, I probably, yeah, I need to like go back and like read the first draft. That would be a really interesting exercise. <laughs> um, he still made friends. I still had a character named Animal and Hugo. He made friends with these kids. Um, but then he had a crush on a grad student. And then his professor, he found out his professor was sleeping with the grad student. Um, yeah, it was a different thing. Um, and so I, I tinkered away at that draft. And then I was like, it's not good. I think I sent it to my agents and they were like, cool. <laughs> and then I, and then I, um, uh, I was like, this isn't flowing for me. And I, and honestly, when I wrote it as a male lead, I, it was a struggle. It was something that I like set out to do. I think, mm -hmm. I think at the time I was like, well, I don't want to be like pigeonholed. It's like, only writing like stories about women or something. Sure. I want to like show I can do something else, which is so ridiculous now. But well, that's also time... a theme that keeps coming up for your characters, not wanting to be pigeonholed. Um, yeah. Very much with Unexpected, how Colby Smolder's character, she doesn't just want to be identified as a mom. And same thing with totally. Gillian Jacobs character in this. She's really struggling to figure out, well, what is my identity? Yeah. And also Gillian and, and I used to go here is like, how, like, what should I write to make, uh, you know that the, right. what is like the world what does the industry want you know and I'll write to like do that and that I'm always writing about like my own personal shit you know <laughs> so like yeah I, I did that and then once I freed myself up to write with a female lead it just like opened up the movie so much and then mm -hmm. I was like I really had fun with it a new way um, and once I had that draft it probably took another two years to get it, get it made Mm -hmm. um, it was really hard to find the financing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there, uh, I mean, that's, it seems like there's the parallel in the, right in the beginning of the film when she's being told, uh, we're not going to distribute your book the way that we were saying. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, but how are people going to know about this? And yeah. That's, I mean, that's, you've experienced that with filmmaking as well. Yeah. And, uh, certainly with the opening weekend of when a film is released. Yeah. Um, and I mean, th was this, uh, a, I, you kind of asked this already, Jake, but um, how did this really kind of uh, meet up at that? And was like, oh, cool. More of a it was, was Yeah, it like it, I mean, kind of, uh, I think I got that question a lot because it, it seemed, it seemed almost like uncanny, the similarities or whatever, mm -hmm. because yeah, she has like a, this book tour that's canceled. Um, and I had my festival run that was canceled because of COVID. Obviously, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, but... Just like you planned Luke, it. Yeah, Luke calls that pulling a Babe Ruth. You, <laughs> you pointed and it just... I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I the, that was obviously just like circumstantial because of the world or whatever. But but in the past, it's... Yeah, you you make the film and then someone buys it and you're and they're like, we love it. We're gonna do a great job with it. And then you find out they're like, don't put any money into publicizing it or whatever. Right. It's like, you know, sometimes for like these indie films, you you think like, damn, if they could be on billboards and if they took out newspaper ads and if they just like put the trailers on TV, like everyone would go and see it. Like. Right obviously like that why that wouldn't they like, want to do that well it's just like that's, that's how people that's yeah. why people go to see movies because they've been advertised to they're sure. like oh i heard this is coming out <laughs> and if if some you know if a kind of if a indie film got got publicized in the same way like you have to figure people go see it but um but i don't know so do you yeah see that I, happening? Been... Oh, i'm sorry no do i see no. that happening no <laughs> no, <laughs> we're just kind of going to be stuck in this little indie groove kind of but thing. We're fine, right? but it's fine. We're fine. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's They'll like, be okay. They made. Well, it I mean, so the good. list of people that you said you came up with are all like about they're to all run Hollywood already. So. Totally, they're already <laughs> running Hollywood. Yeah, all of those people are making like incredible right. stuff with big budgets or whatever budgets they want. Huge, and huge and it's like really good. You know, like yeah. all those. Yeah, I came up with like incredibly talented people. And the and truth is, 
the reason why they're making really big stuff today is is because they're talented yes but it's also because they were like i'm just gonna fucking do it yeah. and they just kept doing it and that is what that is literally all you have to do to succeed um and they just did it they were just like i'm gonna keep making stuff wonderful yeah uh, of gumption <laughs> yeah uh i had a question Hey, yeah. Chris, Chris, I have a question. Yes, Jake. Uh, uh, Chris, so uh, during the scene, and I used to go here with, sorry, we were just having this conversation. It okay. is Gillian Jacobs. Gillian it Jacobs. is Gillian, yeah. Gillian. Um, there's a couple, with the with the student, like the, the poetry April. reading. Yeah. They, she says a couple of lines, like it's not in vogue. Like the yeah. one name titles are not in vogue. Um, right her reaction to your own press when she says your own press. I was just wondering where you yeah. kind of landed in that conversation. Is that, is that you talking to a younger generation? Is that you oh, talking to an older generation? Is it, are you both? Does it matter? I don't know if I was like, I don't know if I was, I don't know if it's like me talking to anyone, you right. know, sure. like, but I, but I did think like, this is, I have felt the, this feeling of threat and insecurity before where I'm like, um, where I'm like, whoa, this person is like younger than me and more talented than me. And uh, that is threatening to me. And I kind of like, uh, and you kind of get this kind of like arrogant attitude, which is like, yeah, like you think you know what you're doing, like you don't know anything, right. you know. <laughs> and um, and I I don't uh, I don't live in that way of thinking, but I have had moments before where I have felt that kind of um, that kind of like wave of insecurity before. Sure. And um, and that I was just trying to imagine that on on Gillian's character. Um, sure. and, and the feeling of kind of like having these, this like idealistic idea of like what it means to be an artist mm -hmm. and then actually having to make it and realizing that you have to bend to the will of um, the, the sort of like the mainstream like industry of it all. Right. And that that does kind of like zap your soul a little bit um and yeah i mean you know i do think like those it, it that conversation is really like her battling herself you know it's mm -hmm. like or her battling her younger self or whatever sure. like having these ideas of like artistry and then realizing like you like and then basically like becoming a sellout Right. It's like the same conversation everybody has with like their dad or whatever. With your dad, your dad's like, okay, you can be like an artist, but at some point you're gonna realize that you have to pay a fucking mortgage, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and like you know, your dad's not wrong, but right. your dad became like an accountant or whatever instead of like whatever the hell he wanted to be, sure. and so your dad's jaded, you know? And like, and so watching that happen to a character in in real time or almost happen to a character right. in real time i think it was like an interesting thing that i wanted to explore it's it's not what happened to me like mm -hmm. i am an artist i i definitely feel like i have found a balance in terms of what i want to explore creatively and like also like making stuff that's like maybe like more mainstream or something sure. um like i don't I don't personally feel like I've had to art like compromise artistically. Um, but, but the, the character does feel like she's had to do that. And in the end she kind of learns like she doesn't have to do that. And she right. learns that like from the kids or um, at the school. Sure. Um, yeah. Did, and maybe I'm harping too on a too specific no, no. thing. Did anyone actually tell you like, cause you had a movie called unexpected. Did someone say one no. word? No, you came up I'm with that. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm just curious. I, no, I always, no, it's kind of that's a just great story. writing because I just assumed it was something that was said no, to you. It didn't ever happen to me. No, it's just well, great writing, Jake. It's just great writing. <laughs> it's a writer's uh, movie. 
Well, I mean, <laughs> in, in a movie where you're talking, like a lot of it is parallels between you. I did. This is the, the you know, first like, time. This is the first time I realized that my first film, that unexpected, was a one word title, and that that would could even be like, uh, yeah, the connected or whatever. Sure. Um, the the one word, the personal. There is like there is one line that where personal she says essay the personal is essay dead. is dead, <laughs> and I found that. Uh, that's a that's like a headline for some from the new yorker or something like that like okay. i i was just like there was a kind of a trend in like personal essay stuff like i don't know five years ago or something mm-hmm. and um and yeah i like i stole that directly from some headline from some like journal or whatever that was like the personal essay is dead and i was like that's a that's like great i love the idea <laughs> I love the idea of her like quoting that, you know, as her right. own or something. Yeah. A hundred percent. Trying to hack <laughs> her way through. <laughs> yeah, totally. I like how you have the, you, you have all these problems for these characters, but you don't go out of your way to try to solve any of these mm. problems. Yeah. Really any of them. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I love to me, Brent tall Brandon was really the heart and soul of the movie. And he's like, he's the, he steals it. Wait a minute. Why? Why is mm-hmm. why have we never talked about this before? <laughs> and it, mm-hmm. it's like he's the sort of vessel that the truth sets everyone free, and it, yeah. no, no one really wakes up until then. He's like your Cameron Fry in a way. Yeah, I I think he's brilliant. I love Tall Brandon. <laughs> Tall Brandon is just a guy I knew. Like he's a filmmaker and you know an actor, but like. He should be famous, like Paul Brandon. He's like a local Chicago guy. He's uh, really? incredible. Yeah. Are you gonna and write he, him into the next thing? Um, I have not written him into the next thing, but I gotta put him in. Every time I do a movie, I'm like, I gotta put Tall Brandon in here. Right? <laughs> um, the Tall Brandon connected universe is what yeah. you're building right yeah. now. Yeah, the, th- the constant thread. He's so good. He just <laughs> so he really is like so good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he steals that movie. He's like a non-professional actor, you know. <laughs> He's so he's great. It brings he just that shows up. Joy. And he's like charming. That's his yeah. superpower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah. Um, this might be uh, an obtuse question, but I'm curious. Right? Is there an aspect of the process that you like to discuss that you don't usually get asked about during Q and A's? Is there something um, that you like wish someone would ask you? It's funny. I that is a question that people ask, and it's such a hard <laughs> question to answer because. Yeah. Because it, I know I don't know. Yeah, I right. don't know. I've never, I've never been like it's reasonable. Oh, they didn't. Oh, they didn't ask me the one question <laughs> I've always wanted to answer. <laughs> I've not done that. But uh, I, the part of the process, uh, part of the, one of the. This is a totally boring subject, but it, the probably my favorite part of the process is um, sound mixing. Oh yeah. It's it's my favorite thing. I love it. Really? Yeah. Is it it's, does it zen you out or what what's about what about it? It's because it feels like low stress because at least on the projects that I've worked on like I've never done like an action movie with like a million like sh- guns sure. blasting or something like that but like um I love well, like it's so stressful to get the picture and you know, it's, it's so stressful to do your cut. That's like your final cut where you're like, okay, this movie is the way I want it. Yeah. Um, that part is miserable. Like I find that like to be so uh, gut wrenching and like difficult. But once you get there, then you take it to <laughs> you take it to like sound mixing place and you just like get to sit there on like a comfortable couch and they like always have snacks. <laughs> and they order you lunch and then this person just you just watch this person make your movie like infinitely better right and and you're just like whoa like and you know and sometimes i'll be i'll have like ideas and stuff but for the most part they're bringing things in i didn't even know like yeah like they i remember for i used to go here specifically there's like in the beginning of the movie there's like a baby shower and um and then they afterwards they i think it got cut out actually oh maybe maybe not she like walks to her car afterwards and sits in her car for a little bit Mm -hmm. and i remember the sound mixer being like do you think there's like i don't know like a playground a few blocks away and like maybe some kids are playing and stuff and i was like 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like super, super fucking low. There's just sounds in the distance of like kids like playing in the playground. And it just makes everything feel way fuller and more alive and like a like a real movie yeah. and then suddenly color is similar color you're just like oh my god they made it look like a movie um but color is more about like making things just look consistent and good like mm -hmm. sound feels like there's a real artistry to it and it's something i don't know anything about so it really feels like magical to me um yeah sound sound mixing is i highly recommend that's awesome that's the first i've heard a filmmaker say that. I think yeah, that's the coolest thing it's ever. It's great. It's f so fun. And <laughs> um, not to brag, but for Unexpected, I got to do my sound mixing at Skywalker. Oh. Skywalker Ranch, which is the coolest place that you could ever do your <laughs> sound mix. Um, and there's, you get to like, they give you, you stay in this little like inn and they have like these like, like farm farm eggs that they like have there's like all these animals there's like goats and chickens and stuff and then you get to like they have bikes around and you just like take a bike down the trail which is like all like looks like the ewok village oh, man. and then you like go into like george <laughs> lucas's house and you like you get this like incredible lunch every day it was like so felt so special and cool wow yeah. what a trip that's yeah. super cool. Uh, yeah. Well, we had a question from an audience member earlier. Okay. Uh, I'll do my best to kind of paraphrase. Do you have any particular feelings about um, the fact that like, when I go to the theater, it's going to be to go see Marvel or like Pixar or Disney or whatever kind of a thing. Like, do you. Instead of like an indie movie or something? Yeah. I mean, or just like your thoughts and yeah, I guess. Or just your thoughts about the overabundance, I guess. Or just uh, abundance. That's not, yeah. Or if there's any I opinion don't know. whatsoever. It's like, I, like, obviously, I don't know. Like, don't you feel like people are going to go see movies in the movie theater now? Yeah, I think that once once uh, Black Widow comes out, that's when everything is going to really... Like, like I, there's been a couple of horror movies that really played well recently. And then when yeah. Black Widow comes out, it's going to be insane. Like my friend, my friend Theo Anthony just had a movie that's being released. Um, uh, that's going to play at Landmark. I'm going to go see it this weekend. Cool. Like I, I don't, I don't know. Like Music Box is doing a thing now. Of like all these, I haven't been because I I've been working, but like right. they're doing all this cool stuff, and I'm like I'm hungry personally to go see movies in a movie theater, and I'm also like, you know that's as someone that's like i'm not particularly like a cinephile in the way where i haven't always done that i'm not like a, i i haven't historically been a person that's like oh my god i gotta like go see it in the theater or whatever like right um but now i'm just like dying to um so i don't know and but i took my kid to go see godzilla versus kong oh yeah um at the music box and that was like wild that was like that movie's so fun and it was like we had such a good time and i was like this is great like, I don't know. I It's like that that stuff's probably saving movie theaters, you know, or For and sure. also probably simultaneously killing movie theaters, maybe. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, well, like I would love for movie theaters to uh, to to continue to exist and for lots of people to go to them. But I feel like I have absolutely no control over that. And whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Sure. Um, so I can't imagine the music box going anywhere, you know? They did such a good job. That, they they did, did such a good job. They're killer. Um, and they should, they screened, I used to go here and they're like garden screens and we had a really? great time. They're, they're nice and great. Like, and I like that movie theater sticking around. That's all yeah. we need really. <laughs> That's true. You live right At next door to, uh, to the Davis, right? Or near I do. Yeah. I, live very well, close I wonder to how Davis. they'll turn out. I used to work yeah. at the new 400 for years and years. Oh, so. that's cool. Oh. I think Davis will be all right. <laughs> Davis, yeah. I think that the indie theaters are the ones that are gonna actually be able yeah. to make it make it work. Yeah. Meanwhile, this you know, Cinemark just left Evanston AMC, and stuff like that. Like their stock just went way up. Like they're gonna be fine. The CEO just gave himself a ten big raise. Just a big old bonus. They were oh, big old beautiful him. bonus for twenty twenty. Wow, good for mm, him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. <laughs> uh, I know we got to say goodbye to you pretty soon. I do yeah. uh, want to ask you if it you know if there's enough time. Uh, what are some of your personal influences as a filmmaker? Um, because all, the three movies of yours that I've seen are 
so wonderfully you, but they are distinct Different. from each other. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. from like Empire Builder all the way to I Used to Go Here is just two completely different tones. Totally. Um, but still distinctly you. Yeah, it's funny about that. They do feel really different. I think like, I, I guess, I don't know. And I, I have this other movie I'm attached to that I think will also feel really different. Like yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't feel like I'm like sort of an auteur in that sort of way where all my movies where you like watch it and you're like, that's a Spike Lee joint or whatever, you know? <laughs> but, um, but, I, but the stories that I write are really like similar. Like I, Empire Builder is about a woman who takes a train, goes somewhere else, uh, you know, break, <laughs> like, go, go, like kind of like goes through a breakup ish. Um, and then like sleeps with somebody else. But the tension is way um, yeah. up here. The tension yeah, the whole totally, time is but, just like yeah. But this, but this story is like really similar to what I used to go right. here. Sure. Um, <laughs> and and like I didn't and I didn't realize that or recognize that at all. And I keep I'm really like keep telling like very similar story. Like and and unexpected is also about a woman who's like going through a you know a major like life change or whatever. I'm um, trying to figure out like who the fuck she is and like what she's going to do right. and makes friends with someone much younger than her. That's sort of like a, a like, sure. you know, not an inappropriate relationship, but like a, an, an unexpected relationship or whatever. Right. And that's really similar to, I used to go here. Hmm. It's like that. You and know, it continues they, with the next one as well. They're the next one that I'm writing. So it's an yeah. old man befriending a baby. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I, I kind of, I kind of, am always telling the same story i'm really interested in i'm really interested in uh in age mm -hmm. i'm really interested in in the in friendships between different ages and relationships between ages i'm i'm really interested in you know motherhood um and just like uh finding yourself or whatever i know it sounds like lame to say but that is kind of like what i keep I'm trying to do, you know, sure. like I'm constantly trying to figure out like what the hell I'm doing and like who I am and um, like on a personal level and I just keep wanting to explore that in my movies. So sure. even though you might, you know, cinematically or something like they might not feel like uh, they might feel different. Mm -hmm. um, that's just me, I think, trying to like, like figure shit out as a filmmaker and like figure out what works best for the story. Um, but um, yeah, the, the, the stories I'm telling, like, I think feel like maybe from like the same voice. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, Jack, do you have any final questions for Ms. Chris Ray? I just wanted to say thank you for making these films, especially about, uh, teachers. Uh, both oh, Jake yeah. and I, we come from a line of teachers. Our, oh, yeah, both so of our moms I. are both educators. You were a teacher mm. as well. So yeah. I, my mom was a teacher too. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it's really yeah, cool, cool. To, to get to see these stories and cool. you know, different avenues that are not usually, uh, you know, more of the, the common thing that you get to see in a movie about yeah. college or <laughs> nostalgia. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you so, so much. Uh, definitely. I would, uh, we'll keep, we'll keep following you and see when yeah. your next movie comes out and hopefully right. you'll want to come back when uh, the next movie comes to. out. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, I, I, Thank you so, so much. I yeah. really, really appreciate your time. It's been, <laughs> that's my mother. <laughs> oh my God, great. My mother is now your biggest fan. Um, <laughs> oh my God, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's just been a joy talking to you. We could talk to you forever and ever and ever. Oh my God, and thank I, you guys. I really hope you want to come back at some point. I will. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think that's all. I think that's all, all we right. got right now. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will see you in the future. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> What's that billowing down the stairs? Look, I'm really starting to worry. There's half-eaten cupcakes everywhere. We're all out of paper clips, and the curtains smell like dupe. <gasps> what? No. No. What? <gasps> no. <gasps> what? Well, that's where I used to grow my weed. But that's a story for another day. Never mind, never mind.
We drove around until 3 a.m. looking for another all-you-can-eat fish restaurant. And when you couldn't find one? We went fishing. <laughs> yes, I have something that I'd like to sell. Please tell me it's your hair. <laughs> no!